let us try to have an understanding of uh, ZAT 2017 exam and the strategy to be able to score high in this particular exam which is uh, apparently the most unbiased exam of the season and undisputedly it is the exam which is considered to be doing the most justice to anyone who has worked hard throughout the year it's it's a paper pencil based test with no normalization with no technical glitches etc and thus it provides a very very good level playing platform to everyone who is aspiring to get into some of the premier B schools of the country with XLRI being the best institute which accepts that score apart from some of the other institutes now first of all let us have a look at the pattern of the exam ZAC 2017 paper is going to be divided into two parts, part A and part B. Part A comprises of three sections, that is your verbal ability, decision making and quantitative aptitude. Verbal, verbal ability is going to have 24 questions, decision making is going to have 21 and quant is going to have 27. Total time given to you for part A is 170 minutes. Now there is a part B of the paper which comprises of GK and a essay writing question. GK will have 25 questions and the total duration given to you for part B is 35 minutes. Now the important point to note here is your Z percentile is going to be based solely on your marks of part A. Part B marks are not included in your percentile calculation. Part B only comes into picture for XLRI and that too only at the time of personal interview. So the shortlisting of GDPI for all the B schools including XLRI is based purely on the performance in Part A which decides your percentile and usually apart from XLRI and XIMB other B schools accepting ZAT scores they usually don't have a sectional cutoff so only for XLRI and XIMB you need to clear the sectional cutoffs while all other B schools accepting ZAT score they only shortlist based based on overall score now there are few things which make ZAT a very very unique kind of exam and one of the most important things which make uh, ZAT unique is the marking scheme and it is very important for you to understand the marking scheme of ZAT. This is the only paper in which even, in a, even an at attempted question is going to fetch you a negative mark of 0.05 incorrect answers are again going to fetch you negative marks and this time the quantum of the negative mark is going to be 0 0.0 so 0 0.25 is the negative which you will incur in case you mark a wrong answer. Now not all unattempted questions are going to fetch you minus 0 0.05. Up to 12 questions you can leave unattempted. It is from the 13th question that your negative of unattempted is going to start. So for example, if you have 14 questions unattempted, you will be having negative of 2 into 0 0.05 that is minus 0 0.1 marks because of unattempted questions. So Whatever you leave unattempted, 12 
will go unpenalized and anything beyond 12 is going to be penalized in the form of 0 0.05 per question. It's very important to understand this because a lot of your strategy is going to uh, revolve around these things. However, please note that just because of unattempted question fetching a negative, do not start attempting everything. Because if you attempt and you make it incorrect, you are going to lose minus 0 0.25. But if you leave it unattempted, you are only going to fetch 0 0.05 as the negative. So there is a high risk involved in an incorrect answer as compared to an unattempted question. So it's better to leave a question unattempted than making it incorrect. And hence, do not get bothered a lot by the negative associated with unattempted questions because of the huge quantum difference between the negative for a unattempted answer and an incorrect answer. Moving ahead, difficulty level of the paper. This is certainly going to be higher than that of last year because the number of questions has reduced and the time limit is remaining same. And anyone who would have analyzed that papers can let you know that that is certainly one of the toughest papers out there. So the difficulty level of ZAT 2017 is expected to be higher than that of ZAT 2016 for sure with the number of questions coming down and the time limit remaining same as 170 minutes for part A. So you will have to solve 72 questions in 170 minutes. Now let us try to have a deeper look on the different sections of the paper and what are the important topics. Starting off with verbal ability. which is expected to have 24 questions. Now what are the different important topics which form verbal ability section of ZAT. So there are certain things which remain similar across all the MBA exams and there are certain topics which make verbal ability of ZAT pretty unique. So the most important topic of verbal ability in ZAT is obviously reading comprehension like most of the other exams out there. But the second most important topic here is critical reasoning. Then you have certain topics which are very very unique to that these are questions around direct indirect speech active passive voice and then you have questions around the usual suspects like sentence correction para jumble para completion idioms and phrases. And last but not the least, you may have a question on figures of speech in that. Now how do you prepare for these? For RCs, level 3 questions of uh, any MBA preparation book should be good enough. So for example, if you are uh, following any MBA preparation book of verbal ability, uh, for CAT exam, just solve level 3 questions because RCs of that are really tough. 
for critical reasoning you can refer to the usual gmat critical reasoning direct indirect speech and active passive voice you can refer to Ren and martin sentence correction para jumbles para completion the, uh, to be done from usual mba preparation book uh, with you know level 2 and level 3 questions idioms and phrases uh, these are going to be simpler ones and you may have already prepared them from snap then figures of speech again you need to go back to ren and martin to prepare for figure of speech so these are the topics which comprise verbal ability section of your zat exam the easiest pickings are going to be from direct indirect speech active passive voice figures of speech these three topics are going to give you the easiest pickings in verbal so please do ensure that you have studied these topics from Ren and Martin and are good enough to get these easy marks in the paper which usually does not give you many easy pickings. Coming to the second section that is the decision making part. Caseless are going to be can be broadly divided into multiple categories. One is ethic based questions. Second is HR business problems. Third is general business problems. Fourth is around decision tree based problems. And fifth is kind of a logical DI as well based on last couple of years now how do you prepare for decision making how do you prepare for top four there are only two ways one is you are only going and preparing from past papers available to you which these days i have seen that there are a couple of uh, people who are just uh, repackaging the past papers and selling them in the name of decision course decision making course you can go for that or the second option is where you can prepare with us for the entire decision making stuff where the entire content of decision making is fresh and is over and above the usual uh, past papers and where we provide you more than thousand questions on decision making and entire set of questions are designed by none other than XLRI alumni themselves. So we, we run a decision making course in collaboration with XLRI students and alumni and you can be the part of that course and get a very good hold on decision making. Now decision making is the most most important part of that. The reason I am saying this is verbal is going to be tough especially from the perspective of reading comprehension, para jumbles, para completion, critical reasoning. Cont is going to be genuinely very tough. So the, so the easiest section relatively across the three sections is decision making. But the dilemma of decision making is you don't have a book to prepare from it. No coaching institute teaches you decision making. So where do you prepare it from? And once you start seeing the paper, you will see that you no know, options are so close to each other. You will see every option is almost correct. So how do you arrive at the right answer? How do you prepare for it? How do you practice for it? How do you how do you get a feedback to improve on it? Can you can you discuss it? Can you discuss a case with multiple people out there and debate debate the options out and see that yes, you know, this is the right business solution for a given business problem. So that is where uh, the live classes which we are running and the kind of discussions which we have on decision making questions. Um, in our batches of uh, that decision making course, they are going to help you. Otherwise, you can always uh, you know, try a easier option where you, you will go to the past papers and just read out the solutions. But that is something which in my opinion is not going to help you a lot because in that case, you will not be debating out the options and it is very important for you to understand that why in a certain scenario, we should be going for a decision X and in what kind of a scenario should we go for a decision why because usually there is no wrong decision what makes a decision correct or say a decision more appropriate is the situation we are in and the different parameters which get into while taking a decision 
so please be very cautious while preparing for decision making and ensure that you are preparing it well because this is the section which is going to help you to maximize your overall score coming to the next section which is your count part this is going to be very very tough section expect level 3 questions to come in that count in terms of important topics the most important topic stands to be geometry once again where you can expect around 5 to 6 questions at least from geometry the next most important topic here is statistics you can get questions from mean median mode standard deviation third most important topic from the con section would be algebra where you will have questions majorly from functions graphs and then quadratic and also inequalities then you will have questions from another slightly dif different topic that is number basis not the usual number system but from number basis then come some of the other suspects like trigonometry and coordinate which again form a very important uh, topic for zat con then you may have questions from some of the other topics which are relatively lesser important sequence sections and lastly number system and arithmetic arithmetic is the least important topic you will not find more than 2 to 3 questions from arithmetic usually out of 27 you are going to find maximum number of questions from geometry statistics algebra number basis trigonometry and coordinate and that to level 3 questions so please prepare very well for cont and in case you are weak in cont the only way to score high in that is to maximize your score through decision making so this is the kind of uh, important topic distribution across the three sections now <clears throat> now coming to the cut off part as i have said except xlri and ximb no other college has sectional cut off so what could be the expected sectional cut offs for xlri i i'll not take up ximb because ximb has very low sectional cut offs so i am talking about xlri and then here we will talk about bm and hrm the two flagship courses of xlri so we'll we'll talk about the number of attempts which we should uh, target for con the kind of marks which we should target how about decision making and how about verbal see overall cut off with the overall paper being of just 72 marks is expected to remain around 27 to 29 for bm and 26 to 28 for hrm as far as cont goes now cont overall is of is going to be of 27 marks for bm you can expect the cut off to be around 7 to 8 marks and for hrm you can expect it to be around 6 to 7 marks this is in making out of 21 expect the cut off to be around 8 to 9 marks for both 
फॉर वर्बल आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर फॉर बी एम एक्सपेक्ट द कट ऑफ टू बी अराउंड सिक्स टू सेवन एंड फॉर एच आर एम अराउंड सेवन टू एट these are just the expected cutoffs obviously the more uh, so you should not be targeting these you should be this is the minimum that you should be targeting and at the end of the day you have to maximize your score and always try to score as much as possible but yeah overall cutoff is going to remain somewhere in this range because last year the overall cutoff was around 29 to 31 marks or 32 marks which was in a paper with a higher number of maximum marks available so with the reduction with the kind of reduction which has happened this year it is expected to come down by another couple of marks and that is where i am saying that the uh, that, that the cut off for bm is going to be around 27 to 29 and cut off for hrm is going to be around 26 to 28 so you will see that this is a very low scoring paper with low cut offs with low overall cut offs so that in itself indicates about the difficulty level of the exam and how difficult it could be to score in some of the sections so it's very important for you to strategize your preparation based on your strong and weak areas you need to understand that can you score 10 to 12 marks and want to increase your overall percentage can you do that if you cannot do that then what are the sections you can rely on can you can you rely on verbal can you rely on dm dm is is the easiest section on which you can rely on so so in that case you should go ahead and make dm your strong area so that you can score 12 to 13 marks in dm and have a higher overall score so so while you decide how to prepare from where to prepare do keep this strategy this break up in your mind that which section are you going to use to maximize your overall score now coming to the mock frequency i will suggest you to take 10 full length mocks with remaining time in hand some additional 4 to 5 dm sectional tests over and above the full length mocks this should be the kind of frequency of mocks and sectional tests which you should be aiming at and then you can couple it with sectional tests of quant and verbal so how many sectional tests you need for quant and how many you need for verbal will depend upon whether they are your strong areas weak areas moderate areas but 10 full length mocks is a must to do in in the time in hand if you have not already started taking mocks so so people do this mistake that for cat they will take hundreds of uh, mocks but when it comes to zat they just take one or two or three mocks which is very wrong you should be taking 10 full length mocks even before a exam like zat which is a very very tough exam and needs a very very sound strategy for being able to ace it and if you are not able to find a uh, 10 full length mocks through your career launcher time etc you no know, we do, we do have a uh, the decision making course coupled with the the full net mocks where again the entire content of the mocks is designed by xri student so you can go for zat decision making plus mocks combo instead of going for just the zat decision making coming to coming to gk so out of 25 expect around 17 to 18 questions from current affairs and 7 to 8 from static 
since gk marks are not going to be included in your personnel calculations you can just let it be having even four to five marks will be okay at the time of Acceler ipi try not to score a zero that's it there is no negative marking in gk so you can feel free to attempt all the questions as far as essay goes it will be based on an opinion based topic so that everyone can write it will not be a pure current affair based topic and again we are providing you three essay tests in the zad decision making plus mocks course and we will be providing you the personalized feedback of that essay so that we can help you improve in essay writing as well so this is how your part b is going to be current affairs current affairs could be anything of last six months so since the exam is in january uh, you should be very thorough with current affairs from may to november may to november is something which you should be very very thorough with there is a very unlikely chance of any question to come from december so may to november are the most critical months to prepare current affairs for that and the entire gk material for that is complementary with all the that courses which we are providing so in case you are enrolled in any of the courses you will be getting 130 gk tests and the comprehensive study material for gk which comprises of both current affairs and static gk and last year we had around 17 to 18 questions out of 25 coming from our material in that so, so you you can be very happy with that so this is the holistic picture of that exam the pattern the strategy important topics uh, the kind of score you should be aiming at now towards the end i will just try to help you out with the appropriate strategy to divide your 170 minutes this is just one of the suggested in count for 27 questions try to put at least 80 to 90 minutes even if count is your strong area if it's weak this may go up till 100 decision making 21 questions you should be able to do in 30 to 35 minutes verbal ability 24 questions Fifty to sixty minutes. So this should be your ideal time distribution for the paper. If you will see decision making, I have kept less because this is the topic. If you can ace it, if you can understand it, there are around ten to twelve different varieties of questions which actually come in decision making. If you can get hold of those ten to twelve varieties by preparing from a good decision making course, you should be able to ace decision make, making very very easily. Last year, the decision making 99.98 percentile was from our course. So it's it's about understanding those 10 to 12 varieties from which a decision making question comes and it eventually becomes your easiest section and your strongest section when compared with verbal ability and quantitative aptitude because I'm because quantitative aptitude is something which you cannot improve in next 15 days to be able to solve LOD three questions. Similarly, verbal, you cannot improve to that extent to be able to solve with say 90% accuracy for a level, level three question. So what can you solve with 90 to 100% accuracy? Decision making is a section which you can, which you can you know, solve with that kind of accuracy and can develop as a strong to take at least 10 full length mocks to see how much are you scoring and are you clearing sectional cutoffs and are you clearing overall cutoffs so with this I'll, I'll end this session and I hope you could take some insights especially around important topics uh, time management cutoffs and how to prepare 
for which section. In case you have any queries, uh, feel free to ask us uh, your queries in CAT preparation group and we will be more than happy to answer. Thank you everyone and wish you all the best for that exam.